Okay, so let's move on. So first I will introduce the user interface a little bit. So at the top of the user interface is the application ribbon. The application ribbon uh, divides commands and tools uh, in by their purpose. So it contains the workflow tab, the alignment tab, reconstruction tab, and uh, uh, context tabs. Absolute beginners can create their first 3D models just from the workflow tab because it contains all of the necessary uh, tools. You can uh, import your photos, laser scans, control points, and other metadata. You can process your project, align the images, uh, reconstruct the mesh, simplify it, you can texture it, uh, create auto projections, and finally you can make your exports. Uh, you can export your mesh, your point cloud, or you can share reports or upload your model to Sketchfab or Cesium. Then for more advanced users, we have the alignment tab. And from this tab, uh, you can uh, change the alignment settings. You can define constraints like uh, control points, or you can define uh, distances. There are also some tools for analyzing the alignment, some selection tools. And of course, you can export the registration. Uh, then we have the reconstruction tab. From here, you can change the uh, meshing settings, the unwrap settings, texturing settings, and there are also some tools for uh, cleaning uh, your mesh. And also you can export your uh, outputs from this tab. And finally, uh, there are the context tabs. And uh, in this case, I have this 3D view selected. And if I click the 3D scene context tab, here I can change the uh, render mode. I can change the camera scale or define a clip-in box. So now let's move on to the layouts. Uh, Reality Capture has a couple of predefined layouts. And these layouts are designed to aid uh, so certain workflows in reality captures. So, for example, if you are a total beginner, I recommend you to use this one plus one plus one layout, because in this layout, you can use this leftmost view uh, as your 1D view. Uh, here you have your scene structure, then you can have your tool panels. For example, if I click the workflow settings, so here's the application settings panel. Then you have this uh, large middle view. You can as, uh, use it as your 3D view, or you can uh, change it to a 2D view, for example, if you want to in inspect some photos. And the rightmost view can be used as a, uh, as help. And here in the search bar, if you type in, for example, laser scans, Reality Capture will find articles uh, with these two uh, keywords. So I can click on this first one. And here you have the workflow and also the import settings uh, described in much more detail. Okay, I will to my one plus one layout. And now I will describe to you what I did to get my final result. So the first thing I did was to import my laser scans. And you can do that uh, easily just by uh, drag and dropping your project uh, into Reality Capture. Or you can use the import laser scan data from the workflow tab. So I will click on that. We'll select my project. Click on open. And now you should see the laser scan import dialog. And let's go over the settings. First is the registration. And we have three options. We have exact, use an ex existing registration. Draft, registration will be optimized and unregistered. So in my case, my laser scans were all already uh, registered in laser control. So I would choose uh, this option. But you can choose a draft if you want to uh, optimize the registration in reality capture. Or if your uh, laser scans are not registered, you would just pick this option. So in my case, I will leave it at exact. Now we have the option to select if the data is georeferenced or not. So if your data is georeferenced, you would set it to yes, and you can pick uh, any, any coordinate system right here. The first option will lock the, the relative camera, uh, relative laser scan positions. But the sec second option, georeference, will lock the absolute position. Uh, in my case, uh, my project was not georeferenced. It was in a local coordinate system. And in this case, I have two options. I can set it to yes and set the coordinate system to local Euclidean. And this option will also lock the absolute position and it will uh, preserve the local coordinate system. Or I can leave it, uh, set it to no. But after import, I should lock the absolute poses of the laser scans so they wouldn't uh, change or shift uh, after the alignment with photographs. So in my case, I left it at yes and kept it at local Euclidean. Next, we have the feature source and it can be color or intensity. If your laser scans are with color, 
I recommend to keep the feature source as color. In this case, I also used color. In the second project, I chose intensity. And I chose intensity because I want to demonstrate to you that it is possible to uh, align laser scans without color with uh, photogrammetry in reality capture without any kind of uh, control points. Next, we have intensity channel type. Uh, this option is really not that important for the alignment. It can be useful uh, later if you have some unregistered or unaligned laser scans and you want to place some control points. Uh, if I uh, choose image, uh, the intensity channel type will be displayed in just two colors. Think of it as yes or no. Yes, this pixel is a point cloud. No, this pixel is not a point cloud. But if I choose intensity, in this case, a jet uh, color ramp array will be applied to the intensity channel. Uh, next, we have the noise, noise profile, and this noise profile defines uh, how the accuracy of the scan changes from the growing distance from the laser scanner. Uh, you can define your own with the help, uh, with the help uh, section of reality capture, but in my case, I decided to leave it at noise-free. And uh, finally, we have the output path, and this is just uh, the path where the converted laser scans uh, will be stored. And what reality capture does is that if you have a 360 uh, panorama scan, it will cube map this uh, scan. That, that means it uh, will create six uh, faces of the cube and these faces will be used in the uh, detection and uh, matching features and alignment with the photographs. Okay, so my scans are already imported, so I will click on cancel. And after the import, uh, you can find the laser scans under the point, cloud, point clouds rig and I can change the 3D view to a 2D view just to show you how the LSP or the one side of the cube looks like. And uh, this one was uh, in intensity. Some of the scans were with color, some scans were not with color. I'll switch back to the 3D view. Uh, after the import, my 3D view was still blank. There was no point cloud. To view the point cloud, I had to go to the alignment tab and just click on align images. And uh, in this case, the registration was exact, so the alignment uh, was instant, and I could right away see a sparse point cloud. And our support team is uh, often receiving emails that something is wrong, that I don't see all of the points from the laser scanner. Actually, nothing is wrong. All the points are stored in the memory, and the points that you can see in this sparse point cloud are just the type points that uh, Reality Capture detected. If I switch back to the 2D view, and enable the tie points. So these are the tie points, and these are the points that you can see in the 3D view. Okay, so after my laser scans were imported, I want to reconstruct the mesh. So first, I will define the reconstruction region. I will go to the reconstruction tab and click on set reconstruction region automatically. Now I want to adjust the reconstruction region with this box widget. I like to switch to the orthographic views, so first to the top view, by pressing the number two key uh, on the numeric keyboard. Or you can also ch ch change the views from the 3D scene context tab right here on the display. So right now I'm in the top view. I will adjust the sides of the reconstruction region like this. Then I like to switch to one of the side views, so let's choose left. I will adjust the bottom and the top of the reconstruction region. I can go to back to the perspective view. I will just press number zero key on the numeric keyboard. And after this, I will just go to the reconstruction tab and click on normal detail. And it, after a couple of hours, it depends on how strong uh, your computer is, you will get a mesh. I will uh, enable the visibility of the mesh. And when I zoom in, you can still notice that this is not a mesh. This is a dense point cloud. And uh, the reason for this is that um, Reality Capture sets a, 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 a limit of how many polygons you can see. For example, my uh, graphics card can, on, can only display uh, 40 million polygons. And in this case, this mesh has 316 million polygons. So if you want to see the mesh surface, there are two options. You can either simplify this mesh to 40 million polygons or less, or you can use the clipping box to uh, view a smaller area of this model. Uh, so uh, if I would like want to uh, simplify this model, I would go to the reconstruction tab uh, and use the simplify tool. 
And here I can choose the absolute type and set the target triangle count for 40 million. But I do not recommend doing this because in this case you would lose a lot of details. So what I like to do is uh, switch this to relative and always simplify the mesh uh, by the percentage of 50%. So right now I have around 300 million uh, polygons. So after simplification, I would have 150 million polygons and so on until I would reach my target uh, polygon count. Now I will show you the second option and that is the clipping box. I already prepared one. So I first I will import my smaller reconstruction region. It should be this one. Yes. And now I will create a clipping box out of this smaller reconstruction region. And to do that, I need to go to the 3D scene context app, clipping box and create from reconstruction region. And now again, from the 3D scene context app, I will choose the scene render to solid mode. And now when I zoom in, you can already see the mesh surface. If I move around this pole, you can see that uh, this area was filled out with large triangles because we had to capture didn't have any information for the meshing right over here. So after the mesh was finished, I wanted to texture it. So I just went to the reconstruction tab and click on texture. And to view the texture, I will go to the 3D scene context tab and click on the sweet scene render. Now it will take a couple of seconds to load. But uh, the reason why I'm showing you this is that the texture from the laser scans is uh, really low quality. And that is the reason why we want to combine laser scans with photogrammetry. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you in the second project. So now I will switch to the second project. Adam, can you see the second project, please? I can indeed. Yes, looking great. Okay. So this is the second project. It's, it's already processed and finished, but I will go over each step I did to get uh, the final result. So the first thing I did was, again, import the laser scans. So I click on import laser scans. I selected my project. I used the exact same settings, but for feature source, I kept it at intensity, not color this time. Exact registration, georeference local, uh, intensity, intensity, noise free, and I set a custom path for the uh, for the uh, for the LSP files. After that, I just clicked on align images, and this is the sparse point cloud that was generated. And you can see that it's only Grail scale. There are no color, there is no color information. And I will show you how the LSP looks. Switch to the 2D view, and this is how the LSP looks. So it's just grayscale information back to the 3d view the next thing i did was to import my photos and you can just simply drag and drop the photos into the user interface and that's exactly what i did i just selected my folder containing all of my photos and i dropped it into the user interface and 620 photos were imported well normally i would just align everything together but for the sake of this demonstration i wanted to create a separate component for the photos and then merge these two components uh, later. So first I need to disable my laser scans. So what I did was, uh, there are multiple ways how we can do this. You can go to the alignment tab and select the camera lasso and just uh, drag your mouse and select all of the cameras. Or you can just use the select all command or the shortcut control A. And now when I press the shortcut control R, notice that in this inputs panel, uh, the uh, alignment, meshing and texturing is now disabled. If I press Ctrl R again, they're now enabled. So I disabled them from all of the steps. After this, I just clicked on Align Images and this second component called Photos was generated. After that, I uh, re-enabled the laser scans again by pressing Ctrl R. And uh, this time I didn't click on Align Images. I use this uh, Merge Components tool, and this tool only merges components. It doesn't add images that are that are not part of any components. And after the alignment, I got this Merge Component. Let me just enable the type points. 
I got this merge component. So you can see also there are the laser scan positions and there are also the positions of the, of the photos. After this step, I just uh, set up the reconstruction region and launched the reconstruction from the reconstruction tab. And after that, I got this source uh, model. After this step, I could just uh, mesh, uh, uh, I could just texture it, but I decided to clean it up first. Because like I mentioned in the beginning, Reality Capture fills out uh, the, the places that have no information with large triangles. You cannot see them right now, but I again prepared a smaller reconstruction region. I will import it right now. And I will create a clipping box out of it from the previous scene context tab. And switch to the solid view mode. And here at the top of the model and also on the sides, you will be able to see these uh, large triangles. And we have tools to get rid of them. And to get rid of them, I will go to the reconstruction tab, the advanced selection and select marginal triangles. I won't do it right now because it will take a couple of seconds, but after the selection, I will just click on filter selection and reality capture would create a new new copy of the mesh, but this time without uh, these large triangles. So it was this one. So I was happy with this clean model. I, uh, I started the texturing, but before the texturing uh, started, I changed this couple of settings so I went to the reconstruction tab and the texturing settings and I uh, changed the style to fixed texel size and the texel size to optimal. And uh, in this case, the optimal texel size was around one millimeter. So that is the best possible resolution of the texture that we can achieve. And in this case, Reality Capture will generate multiple textures as many as possible uh, as, uh, as needed to achieve this uh, optimal texel size resolution. And that's it for the live demonstration. Now I will jump back to uh, the presentation. And I made a couple of renders uh, that compare the mesh, uh, meshes that were generated from laser scans only, from uh, photos only, and the combination. And then I also made a comparison of the textures that were created from laser scans and uh, photogrammetry only. Adam, can you see it, please? I can. You are back. We are on the la laser scans mesh. Uh, yes. Slide. Yes. So this is a render I made directly in Reality Capture, and you can see that there is really uh, the walls are really smooth, so there is very nice detail. But you can see that the area under the scanner is uh, not so detailed. So let me just and also this area here. I will grab my pen tool just to highlight this area. You can see the large triangles right over here because there were no there was no information from the laser scanner now on the next slide this is a mesh that was generated only from the only from photogrammetry so you can see that there's the walls are much more noisy and that's because uh, the lighting conditions inside of this building were not so great so i had to take the photos with higher iso so that's why they are so noisy but all of the areas are filled in now the next slide this is the laser scans uh, plus photos mesh so you can see that the uh, air that the walls are still smooth and the areas that were um, that had less uh, less detail are now much more now have more detail they are filled out and here this is a this is a mesh that was uh, that the texture was created from laser scans only so you can see that it is uh, very pixelated very low quality and this is the texture that was created from the intensity, grayscale intensity. And finally, here I have the texture that was created from photogrammetry. So this is the reason why we, com why we combine laser scans with uh, photogrammetry. And I now just remembered that I should probably show you how to disable and enable these inputs for texturing and meshing. So I will jump back to the uh, second project.
Adam, can you see the second project, please? It's coming up as gray at this point in time, but it might just be loading. Gray, okay. Now it should be back. Yep, yeah, we are back. Okay, so now I will show you how to disable or enable the inputs for texturing and meshing. So uh, usually our customers that do uh, cultural heritage documentation, they use the laser scans for the meshing and they use photogrammetry for texturing. So I will go to the uh, laser scans component. We'll select all of them by pressing Control A. And in this inputs panel, I will make sure that uh, they are enabled for meshing. Yes, they are. And I will make sure that enable texturing and coloring is disabled. Now I will switch to the photos component. Here I will again select all of the photos and make sure that they are disabled for meshing. I already disabled them beforehand and make sure that they are, uh, the, they are enabled for texturing and coloring. So this is the way how you can disable and enable the inputs for, for different steps of the processing. And that is actually all for my uh, live demonstration and also for my presentation. So I think that now we can uh, answer some of the questions from the audience. Absolutely. And first of all, thank you for such a wonderful presentation. It's very much appreciated. That was great.